The border barriers go up. East and West Germans are now free to meet whenever they want. Hello again, and today most of the news is about what's been called the most important European event since the Second World War, the opening of the border between East and West Germany. Last night, communist East Germany amazed the world by suddenly saying that its people could leave whenever they wanted. They can just visit the West or move there permanently. It's an extraordinary step from a country which has always been very strict about people leaving. 28 years ago, it built the Berlin Wall to stop them. The BBC's Brian Hanrahan was in Berlin last night. At midnight, the border was thrown open and the crowd surged through the open gates. The border guards withdrew and watched, their amazement matched by the mounting excitement of a people suddenly free to do what they wanted. But these were not people abandoning their country, most were simply heading for the night out of their lives. They discovered what was happening by watching West German television and they'd come running as they were to join the party. Some were taking the opportunity to leave for good with baggage and families still unconvinced even by this dramatic gesture that real change is happening in East Germany. But they were the exceptions. We want to like to have the experience to go this way and we want to go back to our country. Many queued eagerly to get an official stamp on their papers to prove they'd been there on the night the Berlin Wall crumbled. Beyond the fortifications, a crowd of West Berliners waited and two nations, one people, merged into a joyful reunion. It was hardest for those old enough to remember how it had been 28 years ago before the wall was built. Did you ever expect to do this? No, no, never. No. What do you think of tonight? It's wonderful. That's what we waited for. Berliners from both east and west linked hands and danced around their liberated territory. And behind them, people scrambled playfully up and down on the Berlin Wall itself, something they used to be shot for. I'm standing on top of the Berlin Wall, which for years has been the most potent symbol of the division of Europe. And there can be few better illustrations of the changes which are sweeping across this continent than the party which is taking place here on top of it tonight. At first light this morning, East Germans were still queuing up to visit the West. Some to meet relatives, others just to see what it was like. West German teachers brought school children to see the historic moment. East German families gazed into shop windows and had their first taste of Western life. To understand why the past 23 hours in Berlin have changed the world, it's important to look back into history. Germany became the center of a Europe divided between East and West. Here's more from Roger. Twice this century, Germany has brought the world to war. When the Allies finally marched into Germany to end the Second World War, they decided to split the country. West Germany became a country where people could choose their leaders. It's now one of the richest in the world. East Germany became communist, controlled by the Soviet Union and much poorer. But part of the city of Berlin stayed free, and here thousands of East Germans began escaping from communism. So East Germany built a wall to stop them. The Berlin Wall became an ugly divide that kept German families apart, a divide that's remained for nearly 30 years. Behind the wall, the communist countries were led by the Soviet Union. But when Mikhail Gorbachev became head of the Soviet Union four years ago, he started a move towards change that swept through the communist countries. Six months ago, Hungary began to take down the barriers along its border with the West. These pictures were seen by East Germans, able to pick up West German TV. In June, they saw Poland holding a proper election for the first time in 40 years. The communists were beaten by the party called Solidarity. By September, thousands of East Germans were escaping through neighboring communist countries to start a new life in West Germany. In October, the East German government allowed more people to travel to the West by train. A few weeks later, Erich Honecker, the man who had ruled East Germany for 20 years, resigned. But this still wasn't enough for many people. Thousands more poured out of the country. Others held huge demonstrations. Then, earlier this week, the whole East German government resigned. 
and within two days, the new government made its remarkable announcement. World leaders have given their reaction to the situation in East Germany. All have welcomed the new moves. Mrs Thatcher has said that she hoped it may lead to the taking down of the Berlin Wall. Oh, I think it was a great day for freedom. I watched the scenes on television last night and again this morning because I felt one ought not only to hear about them but see them because you see the joy on people's faces and you see what freedom means to them. The American president, George Bush, described the event as a dramatic happening for freedom. West Germany's Chancellor Kohl, who's cut short a visit to Poland, is just about to make a speech to the people in West Berlin this afternoon. He said that Germany could become one country again. And as the people of East Germany continue to enjoy their newfound freedom, the historic events of the last 24 hours raise several questions for the future. Will the Berlin Wall finally be knocked down? Could the two Germanys eventually become one country? Would it then be too powerful again? And will West Germany be able to cope with up to a million people who it's thought may now come through the wall in search of a new life? And now, some other news. First, a story newsround has been following recently. Mr John Hemmings from Kent has been found guilty in court of illegally collecting more than 21,000 bird's eggs. He's been called a menace to conservation and been fined £3,700. Meanwhile, army ambulances have been answering emergency calls in London for the second day running as the row over ordinary ambulance crews pay goes on. Health bosses have been refusing to call regular ambulancemen because they're not using their two-way radios properly as part of their campaign for better pay. And finally, as you may have seen on Monday's Blue Peter, one of the most spectacular fun fairs of the last 150 years will be held this weekend in London's Hyde Park. Some of the biggest and best rides in the country will be there as part of the 100th anniversary celebrations of the Showman's Guild, which runs Britain's fun fairs. Newsround's Terry Badu reports. Not since the days of Queen Victoria has a free fair been held in Hyde Park. 38 of Britain's best rides, some dating back over a hundred years, will provide a weekend of thrills and spills. I like having the feeling that you're going to fall off, and um, most of all it's really fun. There are lots of children, and all, and, and all games, and it's really good. And I just think the fair is better than other things. The tradition of fun fairs goes back to before Roman times. The word fair comes from the Latin word feria and means holiday. But nowadays a fair is fun at any time. Any money raised at this one will go to the Save the Children Fund. And that's all from Newsround for this week. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday. Bye-bye.